Hi and welcome to MSC. In this video we're going to be looking at the difference between a subset and a proper subset. So let's consider the set X that contains the numbers 5, 6, and 7. Okay, and before we can really dig into uh, examples, we need to talk about definitions. So a subset, which is given by this symbol here, is defined as follows. Set A is a subset of X, meaning this one up here, if all its elements, and again, that's a symbol for elements, are in X. So if all elements of A are in here, then we can consider it a subset. A proper subset, notice that it does not have the line underneath the symbol. So we can say that A is a proper subset of X if, again, all the elements of A are in X, but there also has to be at least one element of X that is not in A. So we need to have X be a larger set than A is for it to be a proper subset. So what this means is all proper subsets are actually also subsets. And this can be a little bit confusing for students, especially at first. But this is very similar to the fact that like a square is actually a rectangle. It's just a special case of a rectangle. So all squares are rectangles, but a square is a more precise definition of that particular shape. So we can say all su proper subsets are subsets, it's just that a proper subset might be a better definition of the subset itself. So let's look at some examples here. What are the subsets of X that we have listed above here? Well, the first one I'll put here is the one that often gets overlooked. This is what's called the null set or the empty set. And the empty set or null set is a subset of all sets. It's always a subset. Also, I could have subsets that are the individual numbers 5, 6, and 7. So each of those sets, if I had a set of just 6, for example, just the number 6, it is a subset of X. Additionally, we could have 5 and 6, 6 and 7, and 5 and 7. Those are all also subsets. Additionally, we could have a subset that is the numbers 5, 6, and 7. And that would also be a subset. Now we kind of have two categories here because everything that we have here, these are all, as I said, they're all subsets. They all are in X and there's no part of these that is not in X. But we also have proper subsets and the proper subsets are going to be all of these not including this last one. Because in a proper subset, what we need is we need for there to be elements in X that are not contained in our set. So these ones down here are all your proper subsets. So as you can see, we have all proper subsets are also subsets. Which if you say really quickly can sound quite confusing. Notice this last one here. This is actually also an identical set. So these are equal sets. So if I call this set Y, for example, set Y would be equal to set X, but they would also be subsets of each other. So let's take a look at a graphical representation of this. So here I have set X drawn out for you. And we can see that if we define sets A, B, and C as being five, six, and seven, then they are all subsets of X. They are actually all proper subsets because, for example, A is a member or an element of X, but it does not include all of X. So they'd be proper subsets. Likewise, we can look at subset D, which is a proper subset, and subset E, which is also a proper subset. I did not include subset F, that would be this set including 5 and 7. You can try redrawing that out with that as a subset, actually a proper subset, if you'd like. The last piece I want to outline is that we had another set that was identical. It covered everything. And so we can call that set Y. So Y is a subset of X, but not a proper subset. They are actually equal. So we can say that Y is a subset of X, 
we can say that y is not a proper subset. So we can put a dash through that to indicate not. And we can actually say that y is equal to x in this case. So proper subsets are actually just special cases of subsets. I hope this short video has been helpful. If it has been, please consider subscribing to the station and liking the video. And as always, thank you so much for listening and watching.